Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gwen Mukwafe, and my co-author is Alexandra Kokinaki. We both, uh, um, we, we are co-leading the vocab man management group at the British Oceanographic Data Center, which is part of the National Oceanography Center uh, based in Liverpool and Southampton. I'm going to talk about the uh, PLC parameter usage vocabulary and the uh, parameter semantic models that uh, backs it up. So, the BODC, vocab, uh, the BODC parameter usage vocabulary is also known by its code name of P01, P01 vocabulary. It is essentially a control uh, vocabulary for labeling uh, data streams and fields in oceanographic databases and data files. It has underpinned BODC data management systems since the 1980s. It started from uh, less than 20 codes in the 80s to about 5,000 codes in 2000. And now, nowadays, is over 40,000 codes. Uh, its growth in number was accompanied with a growth in diversity and complexity as it incorporated concepts from biology, biogeochemistry, and biophysics, and sorry, geophysics, uh, in particular with the uh, GIGOFS program in the 1990s, but there were others. Uh, it's been accessible online since 2005 as part of uh, the NERC data grid and the NERC funded and PARDIS projects, um, which saw big developments. And it was also the release of our first two versions of the NERC vocab server. As, at the time, elements of the semantic models were put in place, but not exposed uh, externally. They were just used for internal management. Uh, further standardization and growth has taken place as part of the European funded projects CDATANET, NETMAR, CDATA Cloud, and EMOTNET. Uh, in particular, there's been incorporation of accepted scores and RDF standards in 2012 as part of the uh, um, development on the NERC vocab server version 2. So the two main uh, fields in the parameter usage vocabularies, which I'm going to focus on, is the 8-byte parameter code, uh, and the uh, long name, which is in fact a structured label based on a semantic model. It is, uh, the semantic model is based on the conceptualization of what constitutes a measurement and the atomization uh, into its constituent parts. It is the property of an object in relation to a matrix by a method. This is just the core elements. And all those elements need to be constrained against control vocabularies. The advantage of exposing that model is that it's easier to search, easier to align to other semantic resources, it's easier to maintain, and each element becomes itself a, a semantic resource in its own right. And as well, those resources can then be shared, linked to, reused, and grown as a collabor as a co collaboratively. Um, the, um, the property element uh, can be quantitative, like concentration, practical salinity, production rate, abundance. It can be qualitative, either binary, for example, presence, absence, or ordinal, like a category, an abundance category, or just nominal, um, just a, a text, color class, shape class, etc. All those properties, property terms, are defined in one collection, which is called S06. And it can be obtained from the uh, either the vocab server, which is the top uh, URL there, or from the vocab, um, um, the BODC search interface or the C Data Cloud search interface as well. So there is a, the properties can be associated with a statistical term to become a, a property statistic of an object in relation to a matrix by a method. So you could have, for example, a concentration standard deviation, mean, annual mean, hourly mean. All those terms are defined in vocabulary S07. Then the object element, uh, an object can be a physical entity, a phenomenon, uh, like waves, wind, measurement platform, particles, water, air. It can be a chemical substance, uh, a group of substances, or a chemical element. And it can be a, bio a biological organism or any parts, uh, including organs, for example. And can also be an association of biological entities to support uh, variables associated with predator-prey or parasite-host relationship. So each of those are defined in their own vocabulary. Physical entities are defined in S20, S29, chemical in S27, biological in S25. S29 and S25 are themselves compound vocabularies. 
The uh, physical entity compound vocabulary is fairly simple. There's only three fields. There's a physical entity name in S18, physical entity subgroup, S19, and the datum in S20. For example, you can have a physical entity uh, of particles that has got a subgroup of uh, a size fraction as a subgroup. And this can be combined into a physical entity um, that is then incorporated into a P01 code giving the proportion by dry weight of particles in that particular size fraction in the sediment by sieving and sealing tube. This is just a link to the vocab server for that concept. Uh, similarly, you can have water current as a physical entity associated with a datum uh, set to moving platform uh, and then incorporated into a P01 as eastward velocity of water current relative to moving platform in the water body by a DCP, shipborne DCP. For the biological entities, the model is much more uh, complex. Uh, this is because there is a requirement for more uh, attributes to define a biological entity. So of course there is a taxonomic uh, name or the, the uh, functional group names, but you also need maybe uh, to define the, the, the gender or the stage, the shape, uh, the organ uh, that is being looked at, the color, the size, etc. So for example, you end up with S25 labels that look like this. And in that label, it is um, a gray seal. It says that it's the stage is a post-twin pup. It is a female organism. We're actually looking at the blubber of that organism. And that organism was dead. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Need a reason to analyze the blubber. <laughs> so effectively, it is in plain language the blubber of a dead female post-twin pup, gray seal, but in a very um, set up in a very formal way. So this model allows us to deal almost with any biological entity, which is quite powerful. Another example at the other end, that was a very precise description, but at the other end of the spectrum in biology, sometimes you've got very vague description. Like, for example, people who've analyzed plankton samples will know that sometimes you can have unidentified auto autotrophic dinoflagellate banana-shaped. So we need to be able to capture that as well. So our model is able to do that by mapping dinoflagellate to the term, to the class dinophysi. Uh, the autotrophic uh, label goes into the subgroup, and then the banana shape is actually set up as a morphology banana shape. So the, um, not all data models, not all of our users want the biological entity embedded in the P01 code. Uh, so it's very important. A lot of the biology schema use the Darwin core standards, which stores a biological entity in a very um, uh, formal uh, schema. So we, in order to uh, support those communities, we've developed a, a, a biological entity concept, which is biological entity specified elsewhere. And this allows us to create P01 codes, uh, like abundance of biological entities specified elsewhere per unit volume of the sediment that can then be used in a, a data schema like the uh, Ocean Biogeographic Information System or the Emodnet Biology format. Um, so those are just other examples of such codes we've developed, track duration, count, January, midwinter count. So the object um, element, uh, we try to link it to an authoritative name registries as much as possible. So for the biological term, we use worms as a reference. Uh, and for the chemical term, we use CAS, the CAS registry as a reference. Uh, and then also, whenever there is um, a record in the chemical uh, entity of biological interest database, then we also link it to their record. So this gives a powerful tool for uh, exploration. Um, there's no yet uh, such things for physical entities, but I'm sure it's coming. Um, the matrix element, uh, the matrix is the environment in which the measurement is made or in which the object of interest is embedded. Uh, so the matrix is defined in S26. Uh, it is also a structured, a structured compound vocabulary. So it's a, yet another layer. Uh, the matrix is made of the sphere name, uh, coded in, uh, defined in S21. So that could be water body, sediment, etc. 
it's got this, uh, it's got a subgroup, which is rarely used. In fact, it's mainly used for size fractionation of sediments, of suspended particles. Uh, but then, importantly, it's got a phase uh, entity as part of the model. And that could be, for example, particulate, dissolved plus reactive particulate, aerosol, etc. And because phase is often dependent on filtration uh, and other things, um, we needed a subgroup. Uh, which mainly caters for um, size fractionation or, or some qualifiers, like for example, slow sinking uh, particulate material, uh, which uh, we had to develop recently for a um, particular technique. So there is a variant in the matrix, um, um, in the use of the matrix, is that if the matrix is a biota, then the matrix element is a combination of the S26 term biota and a biological entity added to it. So that allows us to deal with uh, contaminants in biota as, as has been uh, um, used uh, a lot in the ammonite chemistry <coughs> project. So as an example, you've got concentration of hexachlorobenzene per unit wet weight of biota in the blubber of that gray seal. So the relationship element uh, is in fact the link between the property of the object and the matrix. It contains important information about the multiple ways of expressing a measured quantity in relation to its environment. So it forces us to be explicit uh, about the way the measurement is reported. For example, per unit volume of the water body or per unit wet weight of biota or integrated over depths in the water body. This kind of information is very often left out if um, and, but they are very important. The other example here, like count of gray seal, I like my gray seal, count of gray seal out of the water body or in the water body, again, this is something that the biologists will want to be able to distinguish. Um, the relation terms are defined in the vocabulary S02. Ooh. You've been, am I over? Already? It's in question time. Yes, well, all right. Sorry. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, method is covered by three vocabularies that you see here. Uh, the method fields are optional. Uh, the P01 code with a method defined are mapped to broader non method specific codes. And the broader terms can be used for aggregation or when the information is stored uh, elsewhere in the schema or when the information is simply not available. So, this is just a summary of the anatomy of a BODC code the what, the where, and the how of measurements. Uh, the semantic model is now available on the NetVocab server in, under this, uh, the collection S01. So mapping have been used to connect the uh, concept to uh, each control vocabulary. So for example, parameter entity is mapped to every concept in S06, etc. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll have to. So this allows people who know how to use Sparkle endpoint to actually access um, the, um, the semantic model and the mappings. So we've also developed uh, tools, a part of uh, Cdata Cloud. There is a Maris facet search tool for uh, browsing the um, PZ1 uh, codes according to the parameter semantic model. And BODC has built uh, a tool as well for actually submitting new codes and searching them. It's more for the experienced user, but they are both, I encourage you to use them both. So finally, we've been looking at uh, publishing uh, the semantic model as a as an ontology, well, the, the semantic model as an ontology, um, because it was the semantic model started with a complex property model. Uh, we've used this to map um, to map each concept to um, to that ontology, and using also SOSA for the methodology. So the P01 uh, is being connected to all those internal and external vocabularies. Uh, we are dealing with legacy as well, so we are 85% complete at the moment. So we still have got 15% to go, but uh, hopefully we'll get that done in the next couple of months. So also looking forward to using more uh, formal terminologies to map to. Um, so just to commence, annotating data with control vocabulary is very time consuming, so standardized fine grain annotation ensures that optimum reuse of the data uh, is achieved. Entity tag with precise concept can always be aggregated later, but entity tag with uh, broad concept will always have a more limited reuse value. So it's something to bear in mind. So finally, just thank you. I wanted to thank uh, well Roy, who was created uh, the uh, dictionary and was still very helpful. Uh, he comes every month. Uh, he's retired now, being a, gr a granddad, and very happy. 
I wanted to thank Adam Lidbetter and Rob Thomas as well for all the work they've done in the past, and we are continuing that legacy. Uh, voc the vocab management group, the, Unix, the users community, uh, NERC funding, and European funding. And this is my last slide. So.